and now the true series begins. Welcome back, everybody, to the Game of Thrones mod. So much for the White Walkers, so I guess they're not the real threat anymore. It's the true showdown you're all waiting for. The true heir, King Malus of Pentos. Oh, that threw me off completely then. Stark Targaryen versus the saviors of Westeros. The Aztecs, and of course, House Stark as well. They're a distant, a distant, very, very distant relative at this stage. Aztec Starks. Who's going to win? I mean, the Aztecs have 200,000 men after they defeated the White Walks apparently very handily. I guess he just killed the Night King dead and the rest all crumbled with it. I don't know how the hell they managed that without losing more troops. But they did it. And goddamn, did they do it quick. So this boy is very, I mean, just, just going to unify the realm insanely fast. He's going to basically rip through the north. He's got, I assume, historical claims on it because he has, yeah, Grant's traditional claim of the Kingdom of the North. He has that Stark blood still. So, and he's got apparently a, a wolf and a shadow cat. Interesting. So he's probably going to grab the North up very, very quickly, and then is going to maybe even reform the Seven Kingdoms. So it's a race. It is. It is a race, like I said, between the Savior of Rest Westeros and the true heir of Westeros. I think we need a dragon. I think there is one thing that can stop an army of two hundred thousand men, and that's a dragon. But first things first. I think we want to get Dragonstone back. Dragonstone has not yet been subjugated by the Aztecs. They have not bent the knee to their savior. We've just got some random, random dude, some random lowborn man has basically put a claim on it, basically saying, this is mine now. Uh, Westeros, Valerian's probably all he's got. I think we get rid of him. Why can't we go to war with him, seeing as we have Valid Castus Bellite? We've got a claim on Dragonstone. We... Yeah, High Lordship of Dragonstone. Oh, it doesn't exist. It's not the province, it's the High Lordship. Oh, well, that's a bit shit, huh? Um... So, for a while, I imagine this is going to be very slow, whilst uh, whilst the game sort of decides what the hell it wants to do with that. But it's, like, I think this is cooler than the scenario I set up, let's put it that way. Young Aegon loves to do things his own way, often takes it personally and gets angry when others offer options. Don't talk about the others anymore, we don't talk about their name. Um, Diligent would obviously be incredible, and he got... Paranoid? Nothing? I don't think he got anything. Oris will get exceptional education. Others arrives in our court. I don't know what they're all coming over to us. Get the hell out of here. I think they, they, they die almost instantly when they are outside of the Winter Realm. So, I'm not worried about that too much. So, essentially, Westeros is in anarchy right now. It's just a bunch of people who have, have said, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine, etc. Local lords very much taking control of the place. It's just going to be a, a whole bunch of warring states. And an absolute mess. It needs somebody to unify it. A true king with king's blood. Which is going to be us. Um, Harman Stark is going in favor on Walter. We want to keep a very close eye on him as well. What has he got? He's just got the Lordship of Cake Kraken. That's all he's got. And that province did flip to his religion as well, didn't it? And now, I wonder if he can reform the faith. Let's not worry about that. That's something to worry about for, for the future. I think that's another holy site there, isn't it? Anyway, um, winter is coming to an end in the Great Arm. So winter is gone, thank God, because that means more taxes for us. And obviously, uh, a little bit more a little more troops as well. Because I think it does affect levy size. So we're going to need every man we can get. I think we start fabricating claims on Dragonstone, even though it should be ours anyway. But, you know, make a White Walker our diplomat. That seems a little odd. I don't like that. Fabricate claims on Dragonstone. Let's grab that as soon as possible. That can be our forward base. And I might make it our new capital. Because it's it just seems right. It just seems like the perfect place for how start Targaryen. And we're basically doing a... We're, we're egg on the, the Conqueror. The second at this stage. Okay. If you don't include Daenerys. Yep. Winter is coming to an end. We know that. You don't have to tell me anymore. Thank you very much. Westeros ravaged by the plague. Wait, what? Uh, I think you're lying to me, my friend. I don't think that's true at all. I was going to say, that no way has the plague turned up, but I, I guess that some the, the mod is resolving something that's happened there. I don't know. My bodyguard, Ran, Ranira Spevin. So this is uh, Edric Storm there, so Robert Rathian's great-granddaughter. I I was going to say, let's marry her off matrilineally, but how Spevins? Do you have any male living members? No. And who she's married off matrilineally to someone. Let's marry her off matrilineally, see if we can get any legitimate... Baratheon bloodline members, if they're called House Spevin, so what? You can choose to adopt the arms of your ancestors. So if we make ourselves a Baratheon, a Baratheon male, land him in Storm's End, and when we do that, he can choose to adopt the coat of arms and become a legitimate Baratheon. So I'm going to say I will find someone nice. We're going to marry her off matrilineally um, to basically whoever seems appropriate. He's good. There you go. Master of Arms. He seems like a strong, strong man. And then, like I said, give him Storm's End would be awesome. So for the next step, we have an option. We could attempt to tame Drogon again, which would give us, obviously, as I've said before, the most powerful dragon in the world, and an absolute advantage against the Aztecs. But it's risky. Like, he's a wrathful dragon. You've got the half taming chance. He's already wounded us and permanently burnt us as well. Or we hatch a dragon egg and go for our own dragon. Now, dragons can be used in sieges when they are five years old, 
and they gain martial depending on and uh, well their age represents their size and their age is almost tied to their martial they gain one martial every year and that determines how big they are their age is i guess independent to some extent but it's it's kind of a weird system anyway they can siege whenever they are above the age of five so or have five martial it's one or the other it doesn't matter but but more to the point We'd be waiting a few years, at least five years, maybe slightly longer, depending on whether or not it's a small dragon or an agile dragon or stuff like that. So that could slow us down quite heavily. And I don't really want to leave these Aztecs unattended for far too long. Now, they're not actually doing anything. They seem fairly content to have their 208,000 men just sat in Cape Kraken, but maybe they'll do something later on, because surely they've got just, they can just conquest whoever they want, right? I don't know. Anyway, I think... Let's give one more go to Drogon. Now, it was coming on our last episode that pointed out we've been wounded for 10 years, which is definitely not how it works, and advised basically, hey, get rid of the wounded traits, so that, uh, because from my perspective, there are game mechanics locked away uh, behind the wounded traits, so if you're wounded, you can't go on adventures, you can tame dragons, or go outside of the core, or yada, yada, yada. So I think I will remove the wounded trait, and then we'll try Drogon first. There's a chance of us dying. How old is the kid? 13. So we're playing as him if we die, which is a high chance, for two years. Is it worth the risk? I mean, it's the biggest dragon who is alive right now and could potentially be the biggest dragon who's ever lived, seeing as it's supposedly the reincarnation of Balerion the Black Dread, who's the biggest Targaryen dragon. Let's do it. Let's actually give it a go. So unlike Aegon's conquest, Aegon the, the Conqueror, the original Targaryen, he, he just had to unify the High Lords under him, uh, the Seven Kingdoms. We don't have that option. We've got to unify a, a lot of people and basically reforge the whole realm, reforge all the duchies, reforge all the kingdom level titles. Decide who gets royal privilege, etc, etc. So, we've really got a lot ahead of us. So, I think we need all the help we can get, which is why we're going to take a look at Drogon. Was it this one? No, it's Great Arm, wasn't it? He's, he's holed up in somewhere, building a base. Alright. Come on then, dragon. Let's see what you've got. Round two. We're, we're burnt already, so maybe you'll accept us a little more. Wait, where is he? Has he moved? Um, show me the dragons. Drogon is at the Great Arm. Um... Why can't we tame the damn thing? We, 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 we can't tame... Oh, there we go. It just took a while. I guess it takes a little while to uh, detect them. All right, here we go. Face the dragon. Which one shall we face? Drogon, who has 71 marshal. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a, a big tough boy. You are mine. Come on. Pray. Pray to the many gods. Oh, you better all be crossing your fingers right now. Oh, shit. We're dead. Oh, my god. I mean, our character was greedy, as it says there. A greedy man, he often remarks on the need to tax his people into space. Greedy till the end. And greedy cost him his life. Aegon. Aegon of Pentos. Maybe this is prophecy. Aegon to retake the Iron Throne. Suddenly, suddenly things seem a, seem pretty cool, huh? I'm not lucky with characters this time around, I will admit. And it's all been dragon-based, killing off almost everybody in our dynasty. Now we have to put up with, of course, the Regency again. The classic Regency. Whereby they're going to ruin the realm by sacking people and firing people and annoying my vassals and sending, uh, etc. You know, big old, what is it called? What is it, what is it? When they, they issue a demand, that's it. They issue demands to your vassals, tell them to stand down and the vassals say no and then blame me for it. Despite the fact that we're 13 and really don't give a shit. Okay, Prince Oris of Pentos is now our heir, that's fine. Deserves to be honoured with a funeral, does he? Well, let's go for it then. All the Court of Pentos, bring them all in. We're not, we're not going for too expensive. They're here, let's get on with it. Spend lavishly on food. I'm going to do this just to give us a little bit of vassal opinion as well. Welcome two of the lords there, and you'll be perfect for my feast. We are going to spend every penny we can. Okay, so this is a good exa a good opportunity to perhaps make friends with our vassals a little bit. So if we back Lord... Lord Elador. Is that how we say that? Elador. Uh, ten opinion. It's not a huge amount, but obviously it's better than nothing. And this is, this is the time... Where we are gonna get this is this is the time where we're gonna get rebellions. Someone accidentally poisoned us, really, accidentally poisoned by Periona. Too bad someone decided to ruin it by poisoning the wine. Well, we know who did it. It was Periona. It was her. Several witnesses claim they've seen Periona poisoning the wine, and she confessed when I confronted her. Several guests became sick, but thank the Lord, no one died, and it was too diluted to cause any permanent damage. What? Um. Well, if we banish her as far away as possible, everyone's... Wait, what? Opinion of us changes? Why? That's so dumb. Oh, because someone poisoned us. Someone poisoned the wine at our feast, so we get the blame for that. What the fuck do you mean? What are you talking about, you weird man? She's right. She's admitted to it. 
I would understand it if we maybe let her go. This is, in theory, the best one to pick, right? Because we get the diplomacy bonus from it, so they're going to like us. They are going to like us the most by being merciful, which is something. But you assume they'd want a bit of revenge. That ah, vent doesn't make any goddamn sense. Fine, no one died. I'll be merciful, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some uh, some opinion there. What a foul smell. Uh, he threw up on Prince Donichio's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Winter Wasteland spoke up and told everybody about how great the food was at my feast. I'm really glad someone was kind enough to say something nice about the food, given how hard I worked to ensure the food was the best part about the feast. Um, I will point out, I am not playing on the current version of the Game of Thrones mod. This is not the Wonders patch version, the current patch of CK2. It's the one slightly before that. I don't know if they fixed this in the current release. I sure as hell hope they have, because this is a little bit strange when a winter wasteland tells me how nice the food was at my feast. Very peculiar. King Mela Stark Targaryen was killed by Drogon on the 28th, 10th moon at age 32. He was a man of unyielding devotion in their vows. He was merely a combatant swordsman, not a warrior, songs of Rittenoth. He wielded Longclaw, the ancestral blade of House Mormon, and the Valyrian steel sword, Stranger's Mercy. He's gone. And now we're a child once again, but a child called Aegon. So maybe this is uh, maybe this is fate, you know? Vomiting has stopped. My courtier... I mean, I can't believe we can't do anything to make the other lords... I mean, now what? What, what if she poisons us again, you fool? Nothing. Um, Brandon Stark seeks to kill her. Honestly, that's fine. I'll allow it. And there we go. Oh, God. Oh, it's a slave raid. He's actually got some of the promises, though. He got Craig Hall? He colonized it. Where is that? It's all the way down there. Oh, he's got a couple of others as well. He's got vassals. Interesting. So he's actually spreading... He's got three provinces now. Okay, keep a close eye on things, because that could that could snowball. He's, he's the most... Obviously, he was the most powerful character in terms of troops anyway. But now he's the most powerful character in terms of land. He is arbitrary. So if he vassalizes too many people, he might find himself on the on the receiving end of quite a lot of rebellions, which would not work out too well for him, I'd say. Five out of four, I'm just going to hold it. Even though our vassals dislike us, when we turn of age, we're going to be able to hold it anyway. So I'm just going to... Never going to press that button in my whole life, so don't even bother. We will mark construct a flagship as important, because obviously we want to sail to Westeros soon. Ignore that one, the North Ravage by Plague. Again, I think that's just the game resolving some issues. It's got a lot of issues right now. Lady Naella Ladoris has done the unthinkable and drank a glass of wildfire in the hopes of turning herself into a dragon. She is adamant that the wildfire now coursing through her veins has given her a power like none before. She has truly transformed herself. Apparently, there is a chance you can actually turn into a dragon from this, but no, this lady has just drunk wildfire and uh, permanently damaged herself. She's, she's addled her mind, basically. Sure. Mantarian, Valyrian faith. Yeah, I think that's just how it works. It's just, just, just Valyrian things, huh? I've never had any problems making friends. To get someone to like me, I can twist and turn the truth until it fits. It's a great skill, isn't it? That seems useful. We're going to get deceitful, I assume, out of brooding? Or out of willful? Getting deceitful. Oh, we just gain deceitful. Okay, that's kind of cool. Now, we should try working on our uh, our combat a little bit more. So, I want to make sure our master at arms is A, training children, but B, also capable of training us to the next level. He's not. So, I think we want to put, like, Zonario, maybe, in charge. Because uh, he has level 3 fighting. So, he would make for potentially someone... Better. He's also not a terrible marshal, but any stretch of the imagination, and he's a duelist. So we're going to put him training children instead. 13% chance yearly. Chance of us improving is very slim. We've got a third chance. It's, it's well, 30% chance, obviously, by the time we turn of age. M might be able to train us up to the age of 18, though. So might be a little bit higher than that. It's not too. It's not too bad, anyway. Um. Oh God, he's actually he's actually grabbing himself some slaves there. This is worrying. You know what I'm going to do? Just to maintain a little bit of air of mystique and a little bit... Oh, that's good. Just as huge. A little bit of uh, Mysterium. Let's just let's just manually check on it rather than relying on the game to send us messages about what is and is not happening over in uh, over in Westeros. Wow. Um, these past few weeks... Oh my god, that's the... Kind of the opposite of what we wanted to happen, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. These past few weeks, Zonaria has been drilling me to use the sword and lances, but it's been terrible. It's far too violent. I'd rather study the scrolls with the maester. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Rhaegar Targaryen. So, so Rhaegar was supposedly, like, going to be the best king ever, essentially. He was a good warrior. He was known as being quite gentle, like, helped the poor and all that crap. Played a harp in Summerhall, as we found out. Um, was generally quite a nice guy, but was a very good warrior anyway. Tia Maxis? Where did they get all these images from, I wonder? <laughs> DeviantArt.com slash dragon. And then we just copied everything over, huh? Anyway, it doesn't matter too much. Um, so, yeah, he was known for being a good warrior, but also for being, like, quite erudite, very learned. It, it, I think I remember from the books, it was said that Rhaegar didn't want to be a knight and then suddenly realized one day after reading a book that he had didn't have a choice, you know, as the prince of the realm. So then, but our guy's not... Oh, there we go. Whew, I was going to say our guy is not doing that, but he kind of is in a way. Stubborn? Oh, God. That was not what I would expect him to look like. He's inherited his mother's Carthine looks there. Um, stubborn. 
terrible. It's actually just a bad trait. I thought it might give us some stewardship or something because he's like set in his ways or determined, but no, it's actually just shit. Okay, never mind then. Um, we'll admit that's not the face I expected. Really was not with the with the nose piercings and whatnot. That was uh, kind of looking a little bit like Count Dracula there. We need to find him a wife. He's capable of being married now at the age of fifteen. So let's go for. She is a peeling. <laughs> she is a. I was gonna say a prodigy, but no, she's she's a peeling. Uh, are you favored by Rolor? Nah, she's forty-five. Um, right, let's just type in first and foremost. Uh, wise, no one. Um, okay, let's check the character one. I'd like to marry someone who's Valyrian in the hopes that they'll approach us about the Valyrian faith and maybe say, "Hey, become Valyrian, you big loser." Um, wise, and we want to find someone who's obviously gender women, married, no, diplo range preferably. Uh, save that as filter one. So I don't believe I've actually set up any filters this time. I don't know. Boom. Okay. Wise, brilliant steward does not give the fertility bonus in this, so I'm not too concerned about that. We'll look for someone who's Valyrian as well. I'm going to sort by age. I'm going to look for that dragon symbol. There's one person, she's 59, so that sucks. But besides that, um, there's a lot of potentially good candidates. Oh, she's wise and capable. Oh, but she's also a Brindleman, which means you can't have children with her. She is already willing to come to our court. You know what? Welcome. Welcome to court. You will do then, in that case. It means we don't have to mess around sending out gifts or anything like that. Could marry for claims, but... Oh, you know what? No, don't do that. You guys, so, so I saw a comment last episode, and it's just hit me, that we're marrying for, obviously, the coin flip event only affects mental traits. So things like attractive, things like giant, things like fertile, won't be affected by the coin flip event. What we can do, however, is inherit attractive and things like that. So what we should probably try and go for is somebody who's, who's is it called tall rather than giant? Yeah, it's called tall. Let's see if we can find someone who's tall instead. Tall, attractive, things like that. Uh, what is that? Astronomer. Oh, very cool. Um, we don't want any Brindleman, though, unfortunately. So let's take a look at someone who's tall, because that seems like it would be just useful to have. Or strong, I guess, would be better than tall. They're very similar in, in regards to the bonuses they give. It's strong, like capable, I believe, is another one. Um, all right, let's just scroll down here. We've got to find someone, huh? Um, maybe capable, lustful, capable, high skill, capable, plus something else. Obviously, she's. Oh, God damn it, another Brindleman. She's already kind of willing to join our court. She is Roinar, though. Um, have we got any Valyrians with this? That would be very, very nice. Hey, Valyrian? She'll do. Uh, she's Valyrian and capable gives... Actually, it's very good. Dragon Tamer chance plus 100%. Um, you might be the one I go for here. Let's see if there are any other Valyrians. Tabella, horribly inbred, incapable, lunatic, hunchback, homely. She sounds perfect. <laughs> no, maybe we will go for... We'll just stick with who we've got because she seems very, very good. So, Penya... P P Penula. Uh... Okay, let's invite you over. I was going to do a Dragon Ball intro joke, but I don't think I can pull it off. Ah, uh, where's she gone? Penula. Um, won't fuck me. The mouse sensitivity is way too high. Sorry, I'm unplugged and replugged my mouse, and I don't think it's kept my settings here. So, by favor, no, because she has a low opinion of us. So, we'll send her a gift. Have a crystal sword. I mean, we can't even use it. Neither can she, but she'll like it, because I guess it's just a nice thing to look at. I mean, how many other people can say they've got the sword of a white walker? By a favor. Done, and then get her to court. A nice Valyrian, Valyrian lady to marry the final Valyrian legitimate ruler of, uh, of, of course, Westeros. That'll do. Arrange marriage. Her to Aegon. Nice. Thank you. That's perfect. And now we host a wedding feast, which, or not. Hey, there we go. We have to fulfill the ambition first, I assume. Uh, we still, still can't, huh? We're too young. There we go. Host a wedding feast. So that gives Vassal Opinion plus 10. Because of just the hosting a wedding modifier, which lasts a year. But also, you'll be hosting a feast. So, they'll also get the bonus from having a feast, which is kind of nice. There we go. Okay, corporate submission at once. My, my, submission. What the hell did I just say? Prince Horus has the bloody flocks. Let him die. Let him die. He's a threat to the realm. Honestly, I just really don't care about him too much. I suppose it would be nice to have an heir. He got ill treatment. He might be dead. So, there is bloody flux in the capital. I didn't think it was worth pointing out. I wasn't going to shut the gates or anything. Because I want to get this guy a decent education. And shutting the gates and hiding away is not the best way to do that. Spend lavishly. We've got the gold. In fact, we've got a ridiculous amount of gold. Um, Castletown. Taxes. Maybe we want to save up and build up Dragonstone instead. I think we do. I think this money would be better spent on mercenaries. Welcome. You will be more than welcome at my feast. And then let's invite all those lords. I was just seeing who we've got. He said no. He said no. He said no. I very much doubt any... <laughs> None of these vassals, I'm not be able to attend, most likely, because of the bloody flux. Yeah, not, we didn't gain any opinion loss with them there, so that's mostly something to do with that. We lost one entry, but gained a trait proud. It's not ideal, is it? He was very, very good at entry, but he's throwing it all away, and the, the sort of final few years, he's been a bit shit. Oh, because he doesn't have a guardian anymore. Fuck me. Um, patient, diligent, skilled. She's very good. Um, patient, humble, 
trained fighter. Brilliant commander. He's looking okay as well. I think that first woman will do because she seemed she seemed very good at what she was doing. Uh, so yeah, she's great eminence. Just, diligent, ambitious, zealous. She's got a lot of good traits. And she seems a good educator. Welcome aboard. Should be a glorious ceremony. Welcome to the wedding. You could also make your wife educate you, which would make him happy with his upbringing. And they gain an opinion bonus. But that also seems a little bit a little bit too Oedipus for me, Chief. All right. Uh, let's go for have a son. And then when we get our education, when we turn of age, we should be able to hold all of our... Wait, martial education? Oh, yeah, no, I guess we did, didn't we? It's kind of probably for the best thing as he's second strongest at martial. And there we go. So we've also got hosted a lavish wedding on top of the wedding feast. So that's given Vassal Opinion plus 20 there overall. And the Revolt Risk has done well as well. I had great fun to serve everyone else. So that's going to keep the Vassals happy for just the next sort of year or so until we can actually take full control of the realm. Lord Treasurer. Illidor, who's very, very Illidor at this stage, who has the bloody flux. So let's just wait until he dies. For now, you'll make a good tax collector, I guess. I enjoy going out there interacting with all of these. Uh, I suppose it wouldn't matter too much for him, seeing as he's already got the disease. I was going to say interacting with all these ill peasants. Delicacies from the far west. Um, they have bought... What, is he, what has he bought with him? Diet includes what? It does say somewhere. Oh, potato. Boil and mash and stick him in a stew. Thank you, Emperor Harmond. Emergency has ended and boom. Hey, brilliant commander is awesome. That's huge. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought he'd come out a bit more shit than that, but that was uh, very, very lucky. Okay. Let's go for family focus until we at least get ourselves an air. This character is very good. 21 martial 18 intrigue means that we can kill whoever the hell we want, either in combat or outside of combat. And let's construct a flagship before the great war on Westeros. I want an enormous flagship befitting the Stark Targaryen fleet. We're still fabricating claims on Dragonstone. I'm hoping that will fire sooner than later too. We do still control Rainwood, don't forget. The castle of Rainwood, which I believe was... Uh, Davos is. That's where House Seaworth was landed. I can actually check, can't I? By actually clicking on... Uh, there he is. Davos the Onion Knight. So it was his province. And I imagine we've inherited somehow along those lines. I don't, I don't entirely remember. It doesn't matter too much anyway. Um, who are you? My courtier. Just a random courtier. I am nothing. Some random dude. Didn't your wife try and kill everybody? Oh, well, look. Dish, dish is best, best re reserved cold. Served revenge. <coughs> Sorry. Edit all that out. Dish is... Uh, nope. <laughs> Revenge is a dish best served cold for fuck's sake. Get out of here with the stu stupid idiom anyway. The two peasant families in Pentos have been locked in a bitter feud. I'll put an end to this squabble. So they so two houses, as you know, if you've ever played the Republic, generally ha two houses tend to get into a blood feud. We can try and stop that. Um it appeals to their sense of justice. The petty feud cannot continue, you begin. What do you suppose would happen if the great noble houses fought each other as you do instead of working together? The peasants shout you down. Looks like t things will be... Oh, wow, okay. Things will be turning violent. This building caught fire. With better time to dodge the chickens, someone hurls your way. Look at all those chickens. With a howl, two families leap over the tables and throw themselves at each other. We gain one diplomacy out of it, though, so that actually worked out for the best, then. That's very, very nice. Diplomacy is definitely his weak point. So if we could work on that with the rulership focus, or maybe even taking carousing. I hate to do it, but sure. Um, we could take that as well and maybe try working on that. Our brother has blue hair. Of course he does. What a strange household we've become. He looks calf, and our other brother has, for some reason, blue hair and... Wait, because our father was descended from a Pentoshi man, and Pentoshi generally dye their beards and stuff. Dario Naharis in the books actually has, like, blue hair and a gold mustache or something like that. Oh, nice. He's fallen in love with his wife. That's good. Uh, do you want a gift as well? Oh, we've already sent her a gift. We've given her a sword. That's a big enough gift. She wants to tame a dragon. Don't we all? Don't we all? Ask my father how that went for him, huh? My father will hear about this. We'll do nothing for now. I don't think we need to. I would love to get Drogon. Should we just... Oh, fuck it. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. And you know what? No man got anywhere without taking a gamble. That's not true. Don't don't believe my lies. But we're going to try it anyway. Tame that goddamn dragon. Where are you, Drogon? Drogon. I'm doing it. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm in for... I'm in... Oh. Look upon me now in despair. That is incredible. Holy shit. Just turn up and he's like, yeah, Drogon, by the way. Come on, stop pissing around, pal. We got stuff to be working on. No way was that the first attempt. I honestly thought we were going to get roasted there. That's why I was waiting for him to become healthy. I'll admit, I was waiting for him to become healthy until we did it so that we had a viable heir. I wasn't... You know what? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, why not? There we go, done. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit taken aback by that. I really wasn't expecting it. Dragon is ours now. 72 Marshall. We are the most powerful dragon rider who's ever lived. And suddenly the Aztecs quake in fear. Oh my god, they've actually gained a lot of promises. So they're going for the Reach and the Westerlands. Okay. We can Dragon Conquest. We take Dragonstone. We take Dragonstone. We put our armies down. 
And then we raise our armies once again to take Dragonstone. Look at it. Dragon Conquest. So, the way the Dragon Conquest cast a spell I works is that you pick a kingdom level title that you like the look of. For example, Mir. And then we say, hey, I want Mir. And then either they say, alright, we don't want to fuck with the dragon because you're going to mount me and everybody I've ever loved. Or they'll say, absolutely, we're going to fight on the field of battle. And then if you kill them, you're going on their titles anyway. Uh, or they win. So, you know. Um, but it basically just gives you a cast spell on whatever the hell you want by right of being a dragon rider. The issue is, it targets the top level. Any top level. The issue is the top level for all of these are counts. So we can conquest all the provinces in Westeros, but we'll have to do it a war at a time. But that's, I guess, going to slow things down a lot. Because obviously if it was Seven Kings, we'd just be able to turn up, hey, we want the Iron Throne, and then it'd be ours. This is going to be cool. We're now fighting the Aztecs. They've got 200,000 men, but we've got one dragon. Who's going to win? Let's start preparing for war. We're going to swap the Master of Arms out, because he's, he's done his duty, essentially. Swap him out for Ralos. Put Ralos on the troop training. You are going to collect taxes in the, in the, just in case we need to hire any sort of mercenaries, just in case the Aztecs decide actually we're a threat that needs to be stomped out. You can stay scheming. You perform charity to ensure we've got no revolt risks. Because if we've got trouble at Pentos, we can't exactly leave it to burn without guaranteeing we've got somewhere else to go. Then what? Then what do we do now? Uh, we can join the Alchemist Guild. Oh, why can we join the Alchemist Guild? Because we're a scholar. Oh shit, he is. Sure, let's try and uncover the secrets of wildfire, because I feel like, you know, whole fire and blood, that type of crap. Um, okay, good. Let's acquire some ingredients as well and start working our way up, making friends with the alchemists, so that if anything happens to the dragon, we've still got a contingency plan, in that we can just lob some wildfire at him and torch him dead. Gather herbs in the hills, that seems good. Alright, so what else can we do to prepare for war then? We have a holy order that we can't hire, because they are vassals of the Temple of Rallor. Like I said, they're basically like the Swift's Guard for the Pope. We've got... Uh, donate to the guild. We've got enough gold for that, so I'm absolutely going to do that. Special. So, Rainwood we could use as a forward base, essentially. We're not going to get any attrition there because we have a castle. It's 18,000 supply, whereas the regular province oh, is actually not too bad. Some of them only have about 1k. Actually, a lot of them only have about 1k. The large provinces, though, are obviously a bit more um, defendable there. They're just all random masters that have taken control. Just random lowborn peasants that have stuck their flag here and said, yeah, this is mine now. Complete anarchy. That's what it is. Just complete anarchy. Now, when we take Dragonstone, we can also flip to the Valyrian Faith, because that is a holy site. And as long as they haven't stripped that mechanic out like other mods have, we should be pretty good to go. Spreading disease. Oh, good. Thank you. Syphilis. That's just what I needed, along with my uh, my own throne there. And our heir is finished his education is shit, basically. Uh, our starts are getting terrible. Not really much of a shocker. There is honorable, though. So we it could be a workable character. I wanted to have a backup pair ready to go just in case we go into the field of battle and someone shoots down Drogon and then we're dead. Not that they'd be able to because I think he's probably a little bit too strong at this stage. Just in case we die, you know, in like a duel or anything like that. Be nice to have somebody ready to just immediately take over. Did that say we got Sil- Oh, nice. If you with respect. That was very, very quick, huh? Why is that? Because we're just? Um, I have no idea. A uh, Dragon Rider. Vassal opinion plus 10. I actually don't know why then. Okay. Uh, we're also an aggressive leader and a heavy infantry leader. So if we're on the offensive, that plus the dragon tactics as well, we're going to annihilate a lot of people. Very, very cool. Top his ideas. Economy. Okay. And he's got my young bastard brother, Baylor, is fine. Two herbal ingredients. So everything is set up, I think, now ready for the big war. It's got triple taxation. Cats exterminate incompetent ruler smugglers. Running. They're doing incredibly well. I almost feel like that's kind of a waste of time going for them. That's the last thing I was waiting on. Okay, thank you. Tashkal Bialy has informed me that your new flagship for the fleet is complete. The drawing is over 700 oars. The huge tail is blazing with the arms of House Stark Targaryen. Many hundreds of people gather to watch be launched. They say it's the largest ship they have ever seen. We shall name it in honor of King Malus, our father. If only he could be here to see this. That's what I was waiting for because the boat gives us a... Oh, we should also equip all our artifacts to make sure that's all good to go. That gives us a martial bonus. Even though it's only very minor, 25 Marshall. I mean, there's, there's a, a very, very minor difference, but it will be better than nothing. Equip Longclaw. We've got Daenerys' crown. Equip the fine set of armor. And that takes up to 27 Marshall. The Merchants, Red Peace and Lords, claim the right to spoil from shipwrecks to the capsize outside of Pentos. Okay. Um, who do we give it to? I think we give it to the nobility and make them happy. Or we say it's us. We gain the gold, but lose prestige. Now, we'll give it to the nobles. It's it's not worth it for that small amount of gold. We might as well keep people on side, especially as we're going to need their troops in a second. That's very cool. Okay, I was just doing a little bit more behind-the-scenes stuff there, making sure that all our plots have been cancelled, making sure that we haven't got any debuffs on our levy size or anything like that, but I think it's finally ready to launch the major invasion. Apparently, we gained our family first. We gained a family person trait with our, because of our younger brother there. Okay, that kind of cancels out. 
do well, no, I thought I gave it to Dynasty minus, but it doesn't. Uh, oh, no, that's selfish, isn't it? Not stubborn. My mistake. Family person gives plus five to everything. That's fine. Okay, so let's... Can we move away from that to war? I'd like to move on to the war focus before we actually, you know, head off into war. Oh, God, it's going to be another four years. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's do it. I think we're in a position. We don't need you over there, so let's bring you home. I've sent up the council as well a little bit as well. Bring you home. Make sure the realm is safe. We are gr taking back the home of House Targaryen, Dragonstone itself. Let's... Dive straight into that next time. This is the start of bigger and better things to come. I'm very, very excited for this because this is uh, very much like, just like I said, Aegon the Conqueror, unifying Westeros all over again, 2.0. Got to rebuild it from the ashes, from the anarchy it's in now, and of course, recovering from winter there. So we've got a lot of work to do as uh, as King Aegon the Builder, I guess might be the right word for it, or be Aegon the... Be like egg on the seventh, I think, at this time. I don't know. I didn't keep track of Targaryen households. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Let's give a shout out to our insane top tier level patrons who have made this series possible in the first place. A big thank you to Justin Wallace, Harik, Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Daniel, Sidini, Conspiracy, Crazy Pat, Croesus, Escape, Facunda Vasquez, Hey Dog, Jimbo, Josh Lending, Tesla, Michael Mullen, Necrophilin, Pelvis Presley, Sean Thornton, Smirtworm, Tom Terry 18, Bacchus Bacchus Wolfson, and Zazzy1711. Thank you all for your support. Thanks to Levels on Patreon. Thank you for making this channel possible in the first place. Thank you. Much obliged, because YouTube sure as hell won't, let's be honest. But yeah, I'm going to be doing more streaming as well, if you're interested in that type of thing. Obviously, Twitch, you know, it's linked below. I, I, it's linked everywhere, essentially. You can't miss it. Plus, in the Discord, you get notifications whenever we go live as well. Probably going to be doing this before that New Vegas. I, I'm sort of, I'm sort of, uh, quietly considering that one, but I'm not entirely committed to that one yet. So, uh, if you're interested, go and check that out. But, of course, not to be forgotten is, of course, a big thanks to our Twitch subs and to our other patrons, including Gray, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Llewellyn Thomas, Asaro, Betamus Max, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Haji Demar, Hancock, Harry McGowan, Icy the Great, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Nathan Flores, Matthew, Nick, Panther Pearl, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Sir Thor Swede, Shari, Wolfie, Zico, Adam Person, Sidini, Fraser Brennan, Noah Gallimore, and the Insane Pickle. Thank you all for your support as well.